Throughout history, pain-proof men have been a staple of the sideshow scene. Men that had extraordinary capabilities beyond the average person who could withstand acts that would leave most people writhing around on the floor in agony. However, few individuals have captured the imagination of modern pop culture quite like this next man. In today's episode of Unusual As Usual, we're looking into the gut-wrenching talent of the human punch bag, aka Frank Cannibal Richards. Frank Anson Richards was born on the 20th of February, 1887 in Kansas, USA. As a young man, he served in World War I, long before he was famous. He was famous for his strong stomach, not because of what he ate, but because of the abuse it could tolerate. His claim to fame was his seemingly iron gut, and his act consisted of little more than taking heavy blows to his belly. Richards began his strange journey into belly abuse by allowing his friends to punch him in the gut, and these were no gentle taps. Richards subjected his belly to physical abuse that would put the average man in hospital for days, if not weeks. However, his resilience to the trauma prompted him to take the act a step further. He joined the carnival circuit performing in small sideshows as a pain-proof man, creating an act for himself by exhibiting how much punishment his stomach could take. Historically, pain-proof men performed acts that took guts, and in Richard's case, he was the gutsiest of them all. He was a stocky man, strong and broad. He didn't have a chiseled chest or bulging biceps, but then again, he didn't need to. Once he planted his feet on the ground, it seemed as if no amount of force could move him. He became an overnight sensation. Hundreds of spectators gathered to see him take blows to the stomach every day. He steadily increased the level of distress he subjected to his torso, from being punched and kicked in the gut to being jumped on by the full weight of a grown man. From here, he was hit with 2x4s, battering rams, chairs, bar stools, and even struck in the solar plexus with sledgehammers. Because his acts being centered around getting hit in the gut, he became acquainted with most boxing champions of the time. These included James Jeffries, Jack Johnson, Ad Walgast, Joel Rivers, Joe Lewis, Jess Willard, and eventually he met up with heavyweight boxing champion Jack Dempsey. Nielsen was able to withstand multiple body blows from the boxing champion, and in 1924, Dempsey delivered his trademark punch to Richard's stomach a total of 75 times and was amazed that his blows did nothing. The same blows he inflicted on his competitors in the ring that would usually render them unconscious. Finally, in 1929, in a feat that Cannonball Richards would forever be remembered for, he took being shot in the belly with 104 pound, that's 47 kilograms of cannonball. Richards had a custom 12 foot cannon commissioned and after careful calculation, it was set at the correct velocity required. Not enough force to split his body in half, but more than enough force to push the limits of sanity and kill on impact an average man if they stepped in front of it. It was achieved by the use of a spring-loaded trigger to fire the cannonball. It's important to note, however, that Cannonball Richards was not a trickster. He was a showman. The cannonball was still fired from close range, from about four feet away, and the fact that it was spring-loaded was never hidden or subjected to a cover-up. The act was still considered death-defying and impressive. Sure, he was using a spring-loaded cannon, but don't be fooled into thinking that this stunt didn't hurt. The sheer power of the cannon knocked him into a canvas wall every single time. But Richards always immediately stood up seemingly completely unhurt. In reality, he actually had to limit his number of performances a day because it hurt so badly. He performed this act twice a day during the peak of his career, often being left with deep tissue bruising. 
In one instance, the cannon was aimed slightly too high and it hit Richard square in the sternum. Although he did jump back up to his feet, he felt he needed some R&R and gave his second performance of the day a miss. The R&R he chose? Rock and Rye, a cocktail made of rye whiskey sweetened with a decent helping of rock candy, followed by a cigar. The next day, he went straight back at it. As a proud veteran, he was a member of the American Legion post 27 and he gave free shows at Legion meetings, the Benevolent and Protective Order of the Elks, and many military camps during World War II. Frank died of natural causes on the 7th of February, 1969, in Long Beach, California, aged 81, after a long and lucrative career from his abs of steel. Not much footage exists of Richards being shot with a cannonball, but the footage that does exist has embodied itself in pop culture. The image of his feet remains iconic in demonstrating the extremes people will go to in the name of entertainment. It's also regarded, incorrectly, as the epitome of stupidity and the ultimate example of talentless fame. So much so that during the seventh season of The Simpsons, in an episode titled Homer Palooza, Homer is hired by a traveling freak show to be shot by cannonballs in the stomach as a professional cannonball catcher. But he soon quits after it is revealed by doctors it will kill him if he continues performing. Other uses include a still image used as a cover of a Van Halen album, as well as being referenced in TV shows such as Seinfeld, The Fairly Odd Parents, Chuck, Freakazoid, and SpongeBob SquarePants. Probably his most famous parody though has to be by Preston Lacey in the opening sequence of Jackass 3D. And there we have it, the gut-wrenching talent of Frank Cannonball Richards, the human punching bag. When did you first hear about him? Was it on an episode of The Simpsons? Jackass? Maybe somewhere else? Let me know in the comment section below and as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. That's all we've got time for today, but I'll see you all next week. And remember, stay unusual as usual. If you've enjoyed this video, you might like this one too. If you want to see more peculiar people, you can check out the full playlist by clicking here. Don't forget to ring that bell to make sure you don't miss out on next week's video. And if you have any ideas on what the next episode should be about, make sure you add it to the comment section below.